Hello everybody and welcome to the Great Guild Wars 2 countdown. There are only 8 or 5 days remaining until the launch of Guild Wars 2. The footage in the background comes from Eddie Guild Wars 2 who really deserves more views on their channel I think because they've got so many Guild Wars 2 videos that are all pretty reasonable length as well. So uh, I'm just going to be showing off a very small snippet if you do want to see more of it you can find a link in the description down below. Now for news I'm just going to say straight away there is no update yet for this whole live action thing that seems to be going on. What could be happening there? I will keep you guys posted, I'll mention it until something actually happens with it, but no news at the moment it seems. But there was some talk about this song that was released by Jeremy Soul. Someone mentioned on the comment section last video that it was actually, it had been confirmed that it was a song from the Pale Tree to the Savari. Now that makes sense to me, but I'm not actually sure what the source is there. So I'm going to mention it, but I'm not 100% sure if that is true. However, um, Regina did mention on the forums, actually have you noticed how little the devs post on Guru anymore? It's kind of sad there's been like four posts since like July like early July but anyway Regina uh, made a post the other day saying that the song will actually be on the official soundtrack for the game that you get with the collector's edition and it will be on like the full soundtrack that you can buy separately if you remember that they released a while ago that actually has more songs so from that it makes me feel like maybe this is something that will appear in game um, but yeah if you did buy it separately it will also be there so you could end up having like two copies of it or even three if you're really into the soundtrack and stuff and you've bought it all um, but yeah, so it is actually on the official soundtrack, which is kind of interesting. I still think that this live trailer, I'm thinking more and more as time goes past, that it will probably be some kind of music video for that song. But it won't really be a music video, it'll be a trailer. Actually, the Gamescom trailer, I mentioned that there was a similarity in the music before. Actually, it is the same track. There's certain bits that sound very similar, like the piano is the same. So maybe this is like just like a more full-fledged version of it. I really did like that Gamescom trailer. It was really cinematic with the way they had the music contrasting with like all the undead and stuff on the screen screen so that was quite cool um, but we'll see what happens with it anyway uh, and some other little bits of news actually that isn't particularly new but has only just come to my attention something quite cool that people found in Queensdale if you remember there's actually a graveyard quite near where you first spawn as a human in Shamor there's actually a graveyard up there and you can look at one of the graves over there and you'll see it's actually got new Crichton runes on it or it used to I should say uh, and you could translate these and it basically said oh I, I died because I kept playing World of Warcraft and I wish I'd been like you and been playing Guild Wars 2 and it actually had that in game that you could translate not very professional, ArenaNet have never really come out and done anything like that at conventions everyone always heckles them and gives them that question, oh how do you feel about being the death of WoW and they always kind of just push it aside and they're always very professional about it but then this was actually in game and it was actually there however as of the latest stress test it's been removed the assets now gone or at least Regina says it's now gone and she also said that the artist that put it on the game was let go from the company a while ago or left the company so I don't think they were fired but that's quite interesting maybe it was one of their devs that just decided oh screw it I'm gonna do this um, because it's my last day or something so that was kind of crazy it also shocks me well it probably shouldn't come as a surprise actually that not all of the devs can read New Crichton so obviously you could slip something like that in the game one of the devs obviously did that maybe the everyone else didn't even notice until we the players came along and translated it which is uh, crazy but that was on a, a tombstone and quite a funny thread which now has uh, been put to rest. Also the other day I mentioned those codes for that unique item that ArenaNet were handing out at Gamescom and I also mentioned that a lot of people were complaining about this and they didn't like it. Obviously it's an exclusive item so no matter how you deliver it if it is an exclusive item there's always going to be some guy out there who complains because he can't get it. That's just an inevitability. But it seems that enough people complained about this or didn't like the idea or at least the method of delivery of this exclusive item that now ArenaNet have kind of gone back on what they were doing and they did announce the other day that now instead of giving away these codes through a password actually at Gamescom they'll be giving them out to European fan sites and then they'll be able to give them away to whoever they like so I guess they'll run their own competitions and stuff for that. So it's more widely available but is still an exclusive item, which I think maybe is a more fair way of doing it. It doesn't just limit it to people who have the money and time to go to something like a massive gaming convention like Gamescom. So that's kind of cool. Also, especially since no one knew in advance that this was going to be happening, so they couldn't have booked or anything if they really wanted it. Um, so that's how they're doing it. One thing I do find interesting is they're only doing this for European fan sites, and I kind of wonder why. Did they just want this to be exclusive for European players? I mean, if that was their goal, they can't have just assumed it would happen that way 
away from being at Gamescom. Anyone from the entire world could go to Gamescom just because it's based in Europe. But now they're giving them to European fan sites only. It's interesting, and the same thing kind of happened with Guild Wars 1 as well. There were a lot of exclusive and rare mini pets, but they were always released to certain regions of the world, and it was always certain regions that got them and others didn't, unless you somehow managed to get it in game. So curious, but anyway, that's kind of what's going on with the codes. I still don't know what the item is. Has it been announced yet? I'm not 100% sure. Lastly, also, this isn't really news, but this is a, a bit of a, a feature on something that I thought was quite cool. Uh, I'm sure a lot of us know what the Guild Wars 2 census is at this point. It's just a, a really nice database of all kinds of different bits of data and stuff you can browse about Guild Wars 2. You can find a link in the description to something someone was mentioning to me uh, in a personal message that I kind of wanted to bring up, because a lot of people have been talking about who's going to be playing what, obviously, as, as releases come in closer, and this is quite a cool little graph here. It's just of the distribution of professions, what people are going to be playing as when they get in-game. Don't forget this is all information taken from players from the pre-release community and the numbers will shift when the game actually launches and there's going to be players that aren't super into the game coming in for the first time. But it's kind of interesting to see the actual rule percentages here and what I really find interesting is the Elementalist is up at the top there at 14%. They're all very close to one another which is a very good sign. But the Elementalist at the top at 14% and I wonder how people would have reacted if way back when they first revealed the Elementalist and how basically the combat system for Guild Wars 2 was going to work and put out those original videos of the skill effects and stuff. I wonder how people would have reacted if we told them this is going to be the most played profession. This profession out of all the others that are going to come, all seven of the other ones that we spent so long wondering about, you've already seen what in the majority's opinion is the best or most interesting looking one. I wonder how we would have reacted. It's kind of interesting to think of it that way. Uh, but yeah, it's just kind of a, a cool little chart, and I would very much recommend you browse around Guild Wars 2 Census. I've, I've kind of always skirted around talking about it, but really it is a, it is a fantastic website, so you should uh, check it out if you've got some time for yourselves. Anyway, on to the questions. The first one's from Skyen Says, who says, I'm wondering on your views of the system put for dungeon rewards, receiving a certain amount of tokens each dungeon run, and spending these said tokens to collect your desired armor from the dungeon vendor. This seems like an all and well system, but my main concern is the low amount of tokens you receive from each run. I've been told that from a single dungeon run you only receive enough tokens to buy the cheapest armor piece in the given set. So my question is, what are your views on this matter? ArenaNet's promised us that there's no grind whatsoever in Guild Wars 2, so it seems a bit contradicting to the statement that to get your desired armor from a dungeon, you have to spend hours to get what you want, or as other people like to say, grind. What are your views on this, and do you believe this should be changed, or does every MMO have to have some kind of grind to make it more enjoyable, and give yourself a sense of achievement once you've finished? I do think there is something to be said about giving players a sense of achievement, some long-term goal, something for them to go for. And I think that grind, to an extent, is a necessary part of an MMO, because they can't make an infinite amount of content for you. They simply cannot do it. There is going to be a point where they encourage players to repeat certain content. What I think the key difference is, though, is whether you have to grind to simply complete the game or experience the majority of the content. There's a lot of people with a lot of different definitions on grind, and it's a topic that comes up all the time and I think mostly it's just because no one's really settled on an idea of what it is and I think that's because it's a very subjective concept in the first place. How long is it till basically we're saying what you're doing is getting repetitive or boring and everyone's got a different threshold for that and some people even enjoy that. So what one person's calling grind another person actually says oh no this isn't grind this is just fun. So there's always a difference there and people always argue about it but my personal interpretation of whether something is grind and whether it is acceptable is I will say a game is grindy and I would tell someone to avoid a grindy game if there's a significant amount of reusing content or forcing people to repeat content or stalling the arrival of future content like forcing someone to level up for ages in one area if there's a significant amount of that required to see the majority of the rest of the content in the game. That's how I kind of see it. So, where we've got Guild Wars 2, you don't actually have to grind to see 90 to 95% of what's out there. You really don't have to grind at all. You just go and you experience a normal, enjoyable, linear progression throughout the entire world, and you're not forced to constantly go back on things. You always have the option to go back on things. You can go back to a map that you're already in to try and 100% complete it, or you can go back to earlier steps of your personal story if you're helping your friend out, 
or you have the option to go back to these places, but it's not forced upon you, and it's not forced upon you for 90 to 95% of the content. I think it's okay to force it on people in certain areas, because I think that without having some kind of content reuse, because they can't create a thousand dungeons, that actually gives people a reason to stay and stick about for a longer period of time. Also, what you have to consider with Guild Wars 2 is, even though you'll be repeating the same dungeon more than once, that won't necessarily feel grindy straight away, especially when compared to other MMOs, because it's going to be a very different experience each time you go, owing to the fact that you can choose different paths, and because of the way the combat system's set up and the different types of group compositions you can go in with, you could have a very different experience each time you enter that dungeon, and there'll usually be something more to learn too. Simply asking someone to repeat the same thing doesn't necessarily make it unfun. Look at PvP, for example. That The people that are going to be playing PvP, at, at the launch it looks like there's going to be, what, three maps, four maps in the entire game that people will be playing through, and they're going to be playing tons and tons and tons of PvP. Is that grind? Because they're on the same map every time? No, not at all, because the game just feels so dynamic and there are so many different situations that can arise and ways that you can win or lose the game that it continues to stay fun, and I think some of that will seep through into the dungeon scene too. Definitely there can be a threshold where it's like, this is way too much effort they're asking people to put into to actually get this reward, but even I, I feel like Guild Wars 2 is even more excusable there as well because this isn't your typical dungeon treadmill where you're doing it for extra stats and you actually have an advantage over other people for doing this. There's no real requirement to do it, it's just how you look in the game. That's the only reason you're going for it, and for that it's your choice to have. ArenaNet aren't forcing you to continue playing Guild Wars 2 to keep doing this dungeon over and over and over and over and over. They're not putting a gun to your head and saying you can no longer go back to any other zone until you go and do all of this. They're saying you have the choice to do this for this cool looking armor, or you have the choice not to. And in some ways the harder they make it to get, the more interesting they've made the game anyway, because the more badass and unique you'll feel once you finally get that armor. So they're just making the rewards even more compelling in some scenarios. So for me, it's all totally above board, and I think it's perfectly fine the way that they've designed the system, especially that this system is using the tokens, as you mentioned here, instead of relying on random dice rolls and just blind luck, because that can be even more frustrating. At least with Guild Wars 2, you know you have to complete the dungeon a lot, but you know for sure that there's a certain point where you completed the dungeon enough time that you're done. You're not just going in there blind and possibly having to do it a hundred times, or possibly having to do it a thousand times. That, that would just be far worse. So, yeah, I, I'm really happy with the way they set up the dungeons. I completely understand why there is some kind of grind there, and at the end of the day, I feel like if it really is unbearable grind to you as a player, then you don't get the armor. You don't get everything handed to you on a plate, or... Or you go the other route and see if it's available in the cash shop and do it like that. I don't think it's fair to ask ArenaNet to then lower all the rewards just because you can't be bothered to do it for some cosmetic reward. Really, I, I, I don't. So that's kind of my opinion on Grind and Guild Wars 2 at least. The next question is from Blackspawns HI, who says, Is there something in lore that justifies the unusual gravity interior? Why do some objects float, like Elona, Kodash Bazaar, and other outposts, etc.? I know that the Asura use technology to create power generators that float in Guild Wars 2. However, are there any other instances of floating objects that are still unexplained or justified through other means, other than Asura and technology? I've got one answer for you, really, here, and that's magic. Uh, I talk about quite a lot, whenever this topic comes up, I'm actually starting to sound like a bit of a, I'm flogging a bit of a dead horse here, but whenever this topic comes up for a long time, I've always mentioned ages ago, um, there was a really interesting theory someone had wrote, I'm not even sure if you can find it online anymore, but it was basically about how, in Guild Wars 1, at least before we were seeing all this Guild Wars 2 stuff come forward, and the Asura's apparent, apparent ability to manipulate gravity like this, you always used to see floating things around water. Some of the most compelling evidence for this was in Vabi, where there were tons of floating plants all over the place, but all of these plants had water flowing off of them, and in particular one of the most impressive floating structures in the entire game, and I'm hoping that when we get there in Guild Wars 2, back to Elona, uh, we can see this, was this giant thing called the Sebulka Basilica, and it was this giant floating temple above this massive lake in Vabi that was called the Mirror of Lys. It was in the explorable area, and I believe the lakes were called the Mirror of Lys too. It was like just floating up there, this really, really incredible site, and there was a mission that took you up onto it. It, well, it is all over the place in the Guild Wars universe, and it particularly came forward when Eye of the North was 
released and we got to go to the tarnished coast and there you just saw all these floating rocks and I swear to god if Avatar had come out first people would say Arena Net were copying Avatar when designing the tarnished coast I really would um, but it just looks very very cool we saw hints of it all over the place I mean some of the earliest most incredible stuff was the wizard's tower that's on a giant floating bit of rock once again over water uh, but there's not been any real solid reason for why this kind of stuff happens we do know though that there are certain areas of Tyria in the Guild Wars universe that are just steeped in, in magic. They have some kind of magical influence. There was this particular type of enemy that was all over the place in Guild Wars 1, um, and they're not so all over the place in Guild Wars 2, and there's not so many varieties of them anymore. But Breeze Riders and Wind Riders and stuff, they were kind of these crazy alien, weird-looking creatures, actually, that we didn't have much lore on. But what lore we did had stated that they were always drawn to magical areas. And in particular, when we got to the Tarnished Coast, they were all over the place there, and everything was floating too. Why the stuff's floating, we don't have a specific story. I think it would be cool if ArenaNet at some point explained some big story about some mage lord or something a long time ago that caused it all to float. But as of yet, we don't really have the reason. But we do know that it's been expanded on, of course, in Guild Wars 2, with uh, this whole thing of the Asura seem to be able to manipulate it for themselves, and it's all over the damn place for the Asura. I mean, you look at half the jumping puzzles that are around the Asura areas, there's no real reason for why you're jumping on the rocks, they're just floating around. So, uh, and it's a really cool look, and I think it works very well. Um, but the, there is that question of why it's all going on, and it, it's because a bigger part of the world so that's what makes me think that there might be a bit more of a story here at some point and it's not just a pointless question so yeah sadly I don't have more information for you than, than that but uh, that's kind of how it goes and um, the last question isn't so much related to Guild Wars 2 so uh, you might want to turn off the video but the next question I got a message yesterday um, from a guy after I announced my channel update plans um, who said this hey WP I wanted to give you my input on your plans for your channel after the launch of Guild Wars 2 if I understand correctly you will have three main series Guild Wars 2 Daily, a Let's Play, and a Weekly Zone Guide. I urge you to rethink the Let's Play and I'll explain why. I think you can do better. Let's Plays are, in almost all cases, garbage content. Hundreds, if not thousands of people will make Guild Wars 2 Let's Plays. Don't fall into that trap. It's easy, lazy content, and if you respect yourself as an entertainer and informer, don't go down that route. A short, high quality video is much more worth than a 40 minute Let's Play. Hope this didn't come across as overly criticising. I respect your knowledge and devotion to the Guild Wars universe and would very much like to listen to your expertise, but if you continue with the plan you've laid out, I'll probably only watch the Guild Wars 2 daily. That's fine if you only want to watch the Guild Wars 2 daily, I really don't mind, but I do have a couple of comments on Let's Plays. There's a bit of a stigma going around recently, and I think it's born from the kinds of channels where people look at new launches of games, they just load them up, they don't know anything about the game at all really, and they just play through them blind without much respect for the game and maybe they miss a lot of stuff or they don't quite get it and they might complain about something uh, but then they just put out the videos and then move on to the next game and there is a bit of a stigma because of that on Let's Plays now from I would say a, a very small minority of the community that seem to think Let's Plays don't have a place because they don't like the fact that these people can put out videos like this that seem to not take much effort and yet get a lot of views and hits off of them but I think honestly that's not what the majority of Let's Plays on YouTube are and not what they're about. For a start, I don't think the difficulty that someone went through to put out a video has any relevance at all on how good it actually is. YouTube's never been about that. You look at some videos out there, six seconds for the dramatic gopher, I mentioned it the other day and spelt it wrong, six seconds and it's on millions and millions and millions of views. Who's kidding themselves saying that the only videos worthy of YouTube are ones that someone went through a lot of painstaking anguish to put out? It's a ridiculous notion. Yes, people are obviously jealous about that kind of thing happening and will consider themselves, oh, I'm better than this and that's why I'm not doing it. But at the end of the day, it's not really down to them to pass that judgment in the first place. Who cares what an individual standard, and I'm not being mean to you particularly who asked this question, but if you have a particular standard by which you judge YouTube videos, and if that is through the flawed notion that it should be how difficult it was to produce, then by all means you can go for that. But don't misunderstand, it's not your place to try and force your own subjective standards by which a video should be on everyone else. And it's incredibly asinine to scoff at stuff like that, which, I, again, not you that's asking the question in particular. But I, I see this stuff happening now, and I certainly wouldn't encourage anyone to ape that opinion if it's coming from someone else. I, my channel is built, as I mentioned before, on a Guild Wars 1 Let's Play. I have spent literally thousands and thousands of hours of doing it. I've spent far more time... At 
at least double, maybe even triple the time producing YouTube videos through that Let's Play than I ever have of doing Guild Wars 2 daily or the countdown or any of this more recent stuff. I spent way more time and honestly effort. A lot of those videos I did a lot of research for every single one of them. I made sure I was exhaustive and hopefully concise as well with every single thing I covered and what I got out of it in the end was a very expansive look at the entire Guild Wars franchise as it currently exists where we learn and go through pretty much everything there is to know. So for someone to say that all Let's Play are garbage content I just I find laughable and I'm sorry I do not agree at all I have the exact same intentions for Guild Wars 2 I'm gonna be doing the same thing I'm gonna be doing it at a standard to which I believe will be very interesting content and really the buck stops with what people want to watch I don't really care if there are thousands of other people out there doing a Guild Wars 2 let's play because I personally and this might sound kind of big-headed know that I've got something to offer and I'll have insights and anecdotes and things I can talk about as we're going through it that offer that unique perspective you probably probably won't get from anywhere else unless you're talking to another really experienced Guild Wars 1 player. So I have no problems at all with doing the Let's Play and I, I say all luck to you. If you don't enjoy them, if you think that they are garbage content through whatever your own flawed standards are, then feel free don't watch. I don't have a problem with that. But what I do have a problem with is just this general notion that started to crop up recently that there's something wrong with LPs. For the record as well, if we were even going to be judging how good a video is based on how difficult or long it takes to produce, I will tell you doing Guild Wars 2 daily and doing the countdown is easier than any of my Guild Wars 1 videos were. I can say that for a fact and these get way more attention. I did a series on stuff in the Domain of Anguish that took me about a fortnight flat of preparation, preparing everything and all it was was a run through the Domain of Anguish with a bunch of people that had never really done it before and all of them using a tonic that turned them into a Marganite. It was wasn't anything that special but it was a ton of effort getting everyone trained up on all the right skills and ready for it. But really that doesn't come into it. I enjoyed what I did, I enjoyed putting the effort in and that isn't really something anyone should be concerning themselves with. Just because a video is long as well doesn't mean that it's low quality, it just offers different things to different people. Anyway I, I just felt like going on a bit of a rant about that because it's coming up so much lately and it, it just irritates me, it really does. Um, anyway there you go guys, that's the great Guild Wars 2 countdown for today. Sorry to end on a bit of a negative note. Uh, let me know what you think about Let's Plays as well. I want to see how kind of widespread this feeling that they're bad is. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Another day closer. Four days tomorrow. Four days. Shit. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day, and uh, I will see you next time.